Hi everyone, my name is Ellie and I'm working with Children of Cancer UK to deliver you a few videos about my cancer journey just so that I can inform you about what cancer is really like and if you have cancer already then I can be someone that you can relate to a little bit because I know how isolating cancer can feel so it's really nice to have someone who understands what you're feeling. So today's video is all about chemotherapy. I know it's horrible. If you've been through it already you'll know the experience of you know the nausea, the mouth sores, the tiredness. It's all so horrible but in this video I'm going to be sharing with you kind of some of the little funny stories that I had from my first chemotherapy including when my mum spilt my chemo wee everywhere so make sure to watch this video so that you can hear about that story um, but yeah I really hope that you enjoy this video and in case you're wondering I went through 18 months of chemotherapy I had nine cycles of the intensive chemotherapy and then 12 cycles of the maintenance chemotherapy so I've had my fair share of chemotherapy so I kind of want to share this experience with you um, and then also make sure to stay till the end of the video where I give you guys my top tips for how to cope with chemotherapy. Hey everyone, so September 18th, 2015, a year ago today, I was diagnosed with alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma sarcoma and I had my first ever chemotherapy treatment. It's crazy that it's been a year, like it's just unbelievable because a year ago today I didn't even know if I'd be able to celebrate this one year landmark but I have and that's absolutely amazing and I just want to talk to you guys today about all the little funny and quirky stories I have from my first chemotherapy because it was a pretty crazy ride and it comes with a lot of funny and bad stories but yeah so I'm just gonna give you a bit of a backstory but if you want a backstory more in detail please go check out my cancer story video the link will be in the description box but just to keep it brief I had a lump in my bottom for several months and it came with a lot of side effects we went to the doctors a few times and then they finally got me to the hospital for an abscess removal operation but it turned out it wasn't an abscess and it was actually cancer so I spent the last, the previous four days last year just doing tests, see what cancer it was and finally this day last year I got diagnosed with alveolar abdomyosarcoma, sarcoma and it was crazy to get the diagnosis finally because you always kind of wondered, oh my god is it going to be this cancer, is it going to be this cancer but out of all the cancers I got rhabdomyosarcoma, sarcoma and it was like, wow, I actually got this cancer like out of all the cancers it was this one so at 5 p.m. last year today I started my first ever round of chemotherapy out of nine rounds of chemotherapy that I'd have to endure this chemotherapy consisted of the chemo drugs doxorubicin, actinomycin D, vincristine, iphosphamide and they were the four drugs and they were a harsh bunch I'm telling you now they are a really bad bunch they are really really harsh they 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 weren't nice at all and all I can say about the first chemotherapy is it hit me like a brick so now I'm just going to tell you some of like the little funny stories that I have of the first chemotherapy so my first chemotherapy I felt fine the first day, the, um, at 5pm when I got hooked up to it, I kind of didn't really care, I was kind of trotting around with my IV pole, with my friends that came that day, and I was, it didn't really hit me that it was actually poison going into my body, but I was a bit looped up, so yeah. The next day, it hit me like a brick, I was just so tired and I just couldn't keep my eyes open, I was just asleep most of the day and the chemotherapy drugs I have are really horrible on the nausea but fortunately for that first chemotherapy the nausea doesn't affect you I'm not really sure why but it doesn't and that was good but it just it just made me so tired people come visit me and I'd just be able to open my eyes and say hi because I just fall back to sleep again because it was such a tiring thing on my body. It literally wiped every bit of energy out from my body. 
So the tumour was wrapped a little bit around my kidneys and due to the toxicity of the chemo drugs I was on, it had a huge fluid, fluid bags and intake and basically my kidneys just could not keep up. So I blew up literally like Patrick the Starfish. Like my arms were like huge, they were like that. And all like I'd get, I got like broken capillaries and if you pressed into my skin it would just leave a dent because of the amount of fluid retention in my body. So they had to fit a catheter. So if you don't know what a catheter is, something they put, like a tube that they put in your bladder to get the wee out. And that's what I had to have. It wasn't a nice procedure, however, I did like having the catheter because I was constipated anyway, so I didn't need the toilet. So I could just lay in bed all day and I was just laying in bed, peeing without even knowing it. And I just didn't have to step a foot off the bed. We so on the conversation about we, I've got a very funny story about my mum. We have to wee in like bedpans, like these cardboard pots, um, just so the nurses can measure your output from your input. And basically, my mum thought she was all cool, carrying these three bedpans um, to put them away in the sluice, and she dropped them all. Yeah. And the nurses went crazy because it was just like, there's chemo all over the floor. Chemo we all over the floor. They went crazy. And they were just like in a panic. And I was just there laughing because I found it hilarious. Because, but luckily, none landed on my mum. Because that would be a really bad situation. And I've also got another funny story. So, my friends came round to the hospital. And I had quite a lot of gas. <laughs> and basically I was like farting every minute or so. And I just got embarrassed with it after a while. Like, they'd all look at me like, oh, like you just farted. And I just got bored of it and embarrassed. So I thought I'd just hold them in. Worst idea ever. Just go with the embarrassment. And when they left, I was on all fours in the bathroom because my stomach literally felt like it was about to explode because of all the trapped gas and it was horrible, it was so, so painful. And so the nurse had to get me one of these like hot wheaty bags to put over my tummy. And for the next hour or so, I was just farting every second or so. One of the worst things of the whole chemotherapy treatment was the mouth sores. So, so after a few days on this chemo, my mouth got third degree burns. It was so sore, especially because I had braces in at the time. That just made it even worse. I've still got dents up in my mouth from where the braces rubbed with the, with the like raw, I guess raw kind of skin. And it was horrible. I couldn't eat, I could not drink. And it just wasn't nice. So I had to be on the like, the food that goes through um, into your blood or whatever called TPN for I think it was nearly a week until the first thing I ate was I think it was baked beans or something like that something nice and easy but my mouth was really dry and obviously I had the effects of the mouth sores still so it wasn't pleasant <laughs> basically my tumour was wrapping around my bowels so I had crazy constipation so I was probably constipated for over two weeks at this point and they kept giving me laxatives to try and relieve it. It felt like it wasn't even working. But it finally worked and basically it was just a diarrhea everywhere, every day for like four days. I diarrhea, just uncontrollably diarrhea all the time, which was an embarrassing situation because the nurses just Especially because I had a wound on my bottom, they had to keep cleaning that, and they had, and I had to wear nappies, and it wasn't nice. But by that time, I didn't really care because I had no dignity left because I'd shown my butt wound to at least a million doctors at that point. <laughs> the last thing I'm going to talk about is losing my hair. So losing my hair wasn't too bad. However, when I went to brush it and it just all fell out, that's when it really hit me. I was like, wow, my hair's falling out in front of me. It was pretty crazy, but then the next day my mum shaved it for me and I loved the bold look. I just, 
I just really liked it because I was a bit fed up of hair at that point. It just kept getting knotty and everything, um, just laying in the bed all day. So I was just ready to get rid of it. And also it made me feel kind of like I was actually part of the cancer community. Overall, my first chemo was pretty horrendous. It wasn't great, but I'm proud of myself because I did get out before expected. I was supposed to stay in until the second chemotherapy, but after the first chemotherapy, I picked up really well. You know what, my first chemotherapy should be a bad memory, but to me, it is still a bad memory, but it's kind of a good one because I've actually made it. Like, I've made it. All that self-belief I had, my first chemotherapy paid off and yeah so it was a cr it's been a crazy ride so far I'm now on maintenance chemotherapy if you didn't know and that's doing really good getting my hair back and i'm getting my energy levels so much better so i hope you enjoyed hearing about my funny stories from my first ever chemotherapy um i kind of joke about my first chemotherapy because you know it was overall really horrible but there were some funny bits in there which is quite nice to highlight sometimes um but yeah so my top tips for how to cope with chemotherapy the first two are linked so the first one is to stay positive without hope and positivity you're just not going to want to do the chemotherapy treatments so having that fiery determination will help you fight to see another chemotherapy treatment and just keep going because no one likes to turn up to the hospital to do chemotherapy. You kind of get to the hospital and instantly fill with dread. So having a bit of positivity and hope can help you kind of fight through the negative mindset and keep you fighting, I guess. Um, and then the next one is to have a good support network. I always had my mum come with me to do chemotherapy. It was really nice to have her and I was really privileged to have her actually because she was such an amazing support system for me and you know whilst I was crying from how horrible the nausea was she would you know kind of give me a hug and make me feel a little bit better. Do not eat your favourite foods whilst you're on chemo. I learnt this the hard way, so I ate two packets of pickled onion monster munch before my chemotherapy had started, and then by the evening I was just throwing up horrendously, and now, still to this day, I can't stand the sight of pickled onion monster munch. So just don't eat your favourite foods because they will soon turn into your least favourite foods. Some more kind of practical advice for dealing with the side effects of chemotherapy. So my worst side effects were nausea and mouth sores. So how I dealt with this was with the nausea, I actually tried out loads of different types of anti-sickness because I had quite a severe nausea on chemotherapy and I was finding that the normal kind of ondansetron that they give you just wasn't working. So I just tried out loads of these different anti-nausea medications until I found one that really worked. Um, and then with the mouth sores, I had this kind of salt and water solution mouthwash every few hours. And this really helped because on my first ever chemotherapy, my mouth sores were absolutely horrendous. So we kept on with the mouth sores, uh, the mouthwashes religiously so that we could kind of eradicate them for the next chemotherapies and it really did work. I don't know about you guys, but when I was on chemotherapy, I always had this horrible taste in my mouth, especially when they infused some specific types of medication. It would put a really horrible taste in my mouth, which would make me want to vomit more than I already did. So I always had hard boiled sweets, such as like lemon flavored things, just so that it kind of took away the taste of the horribleness. So that really helps. And then my last piece of advice is um, to cut your hair short before it falls out. I learned this the hard way because my hair went into this matted ball and it was really itchy and horrible. Um, and that kind of just, you know, just helps it for when it falls out, it's just less clumpy and knotty and horrible. Um, and yeah, if you want to see more about hair loss and make sure to visit my YouTube channel called Team Ellie, where I've done a video dedicated to hair loss. So 
Um, I would love to talk about it more in this video, but I understand that it's getting quite long now. So yeah, thank you so much everybody for watching. I really hope this video helped you and I will see you in the next video.